got worse lately. We've debated it this week. Now we're told that Jeremy Corbyn is rumoured to be on the verge of making a pretty humiliating climb down on anti-Semitism by backing the internationally recognised definition in full. What is it I'm talking about? Well, it is the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance, and they have a definition. Anti-Semitism is a certain perception of Jews, which may be expressed as hatred towards Jews. Rhetorical and physical manifestations of anti-Semitism are directed toward Jewish or non-Jewish individuals and or their property, toward Jewish community institutions and religious facilities. That's the definition, and there are uh, 11 examples of the IHRA layout um, of what they would define as anti-Semitism. Now, again and again and again, there's been pressure on Corbyn and Labour to accept this definition. He has been deeply reluctant to do so, but we're told now that he will, and that this will probably happen at the party's next meeting of its National Executive Committee on the 4th of September. And the timing of that is quite important because on the 5th of September, Labour MPs are going to have a meeting of the Parliamentary Labour Group where they're going to vote on whether to accept this definition or not. And my guess is that Labour MPs would vote to accept this definition, because a lot of them know that this row, and particularly the last week, uh, with the Palestinian Martyrs Cemetery, the laying of a wreath, and Corbyn one minute saying he was there, but he wasn't really part of it, and then admitting that he was. And, you know, Labour MPs will know that actually in Middle England and Middle Wales and Middle Scotland, this is not going down well at all. So let's assume shall we, that Corbyn goes to the NEC, accepts this definition, it is then backed overwhelmingly by the party's um, MPs, would that then, do you think, put the matter to bed? And if you think, yep, provided they do this, my faith in Labour and Corbyn will be fully restored. If that's how you feel about it, call me. 10345 6060 973. Or maybe you think it's too late. The damage is already done. If that's how you feel, text to 84850. And maybe you think, actually, there are probably more of these nasty stories to come anyway. Uh, maybe, maybe they ought to really be thinking about someone different to lead them. Knowing, of course, that the Labour members back Corbyn. Um, if that's how you feel, tweet using the hashtag Farage and LBC at LBC. And you could, of course, as ever, watch me on Facebook and comment there too. So clearly, the pressure now getting to Corbyn, the Guardian hinting very strongly that he's going to make this climb down. It will be pretty humiliating because he is steadfastly not wanted to do so. But would this solve the problem? And, and given the terrible arguments that are going on about Brexit within the Conservative Party and increasing rumours that MPs may well oust the PM. Uh, there's a Tory conference coming up. Boris, we're here today, is going to be speaking at fringe meetings. Given all of the Tories' problems, surely the one thing Labour need to be right now is united. Would this make them united? Let's go to Charlie and Clapham, a new caller to this show. Charlie, good evening. Hello, hello. Um, I, I think it's a step in the right direction, but it's by no means going to solve the problem. And the reason for that, in my opinion, is that so many of the far left and the extreme left in the Labour Party are wedded to Marxist doctrine. Now, Marx, as you know, was a Jew, but he was also, although the word hadn't been affected then, hadn't been in invented then, he was also very critical of, of Jews, believing them to be at the heart of capitalism. And the extreme left hate capitalism and they it's hate the old, the consequences. It's the old theory, Charlie, isn't it? I don't know how old it is, but um, to me it's what I always sticks in my mind. I, I think that anti-Semitism is there in the extreme left of the Labour Party and the extreme left of the Labour Party at the moment are in control. Completely become buying Corbyn, they see this whole thing as being a sort of Daily Mail inspired uh, media conspiracy. The Labour Party's not going to change in the short term, Charlie, is it? It's not going to change in the short term, I'm afraid. I think there, I think progress is being made. You might say that it's uh, people of bad faith on the right who are digging up stories um, uh, uh, involving Corbyn. Corbyn is always a supporter of whether it's violent or non-violent, he wants capitalism wherever he sees it overthrown. He wants a kind of pseudo-Marxist um, uh, government, wherever it is in the world. He doesn't mind if they're gun-toting revolutionists or whether there's some other kind of um, uh, a method to gain control. But he but will Char always support. 
Charlie, um, can I ask you? Can I ask you? Have you been a Labour supporter and voter? I am a Labour supporter. I am a Labour supporter, but um, and I have voted for Corbyn, but I hadn't realised, to be perfectly candid with you, just how often he had damaged himself and the Labour Party by his um, by his support for these yeah. movements. And isn't there the, isn't there the real danger, Charlie, that even if they adopt this definition, that actually over the course of the next months, more and more of these stories emerge? I'm afraid, I'm afraid that's true. And to answer your question, Nigel, which is, I suppose, at the centre of tonight's uh, agenda, mm. how, how will we move back to the centre or centre-left? Mm. I fear it will only be after a thorough defeat of, a, of a, um, a, as an election yes. with Corbyn in charge. I fear I think... that's the only, the only way it will work. Charlie, I agree with that 100%. I think you're right. They're not going to shift. They're not going to move any time soon. And even adopting this definition will be seen, in my opinion, as too little, too late. Charlie, thank you very much indeed for your call. In my opinion, there now will always be a question mark over Corbyn. I think he's let things go too far, I get by text. I also get from Simon on the Isle of Man. As a son of two Holocaust survivors, I will not forgive Mr Corbyn until he confronts his grim past and apologises sincerely and unreservedly to all terror victims for his disgraceful associations. Well, uh, we talked about a climb down in terms of accepting the IR IHRA definition. I don't think he's going to go much further than that. Corbyn's platforming with terror groups can never be put right. The party can now move on, but not with him, says Graham. Let's stay in Clapham and let's ask James what he thinks of it all. Good evening. Good evening, Nigel. Um, Nigel, as far as I'm concerned, it's going to make no apparent difference to me whatsoever if he accepts the definition or not, because he has been forced to accept the definition. He's not doing it yes. free willingly. He is mm -hmm. being forced. And what he said, that he was there to go and um, represent all the people that died, he specifically put... Um, his wreath on the people that died in the Tunis in Tunisia when the Israelis attacked it. But I didn't see him popping over to Israel to put a golden wreath on the Israeli athletes that, that got murdered in Munich. So he is in a hypocrite. He's been forced to do this. And as far as I'm concerned, the Labour Party is dead in my eyes. Yeah, and, and James, again, you know, have you been somebody that in the past has supported Labour? I was a member of the Labour Party. In oh, right. OK. And when did you cease to be a member? Uh, about six months ago. Right, and is that because you've just given up with this, with this ongoing unpleasantness? Well, I've had enough of it now, and it was by election uh, to the council, and they, they said over the usual email, and uh, I replied back to them, and I said, I'd rather gnaw my, gnaw my hand off than vote for you again. Wow. One thing, Stan uh, uh, Corbyn, I think he's a wimp, I think he's a man with no backbone, and I think all that... Uh, flip-flopping the other day on whether he was there or whether he I took know. part and all that was was nonsense and, other, and and showed that he has no backbone and shows that he should not be a leader. I mean, I, uh, you know, I'm not so sure in siding with the IRA the way that he has consistently over the years that he's respected the rule of law. Well, no, but he's always... Uh, look, look at Nelson Mandela. He's always respected the right of, a, of someone to... Um, uh, stand up for their right in some respect or another, but he's he's all, he, and, uh, but yet he's not had the conviction, especially in this case, to stand up and say what he absolutely believes in. He's not a mm. conviction leader. And and David, he has chosen his friends very very poorly, hasn't he? Um, well, no, not necessarily. I, he's been invited to these things. He's gone along as a peace, peace, peace man of peace, and he's gone along as a man who wants to, as he said. Well, um, you know, right, on David, both sides. David, both I, all crimes on either side. I accept your, I accept the point you've made. I don't necessarily agree with it. I thank you. In a minute, we'll talk a little bit more about Jeremy Corbyn, named as Mahe Al Taha, leader in exile of the prescribed Popular Front for the Liberation of Palestine, the PFLP, which is an outright overtly terrorist organisation which has murdered people, including. Rabbi Abraham Goldberg, a British 
rabbi who was murdered in one of their attacks. And it's all well and good, folks. You can ring me up and say that Corbyn's very principled, that Corbyn respects international law. I've had those comments tonight. But I'm saying to you that I think he's chosen his friends very, very poorly indeed. Uh, and I don't think any of this goes away. I suspect uh, what we'll find are even more of these events and meetings that he's attended with people who are outright appalling. Um, and Dame Margaret Hodge, who, as you know, has been very critical. I mean, this campaign against Corbyn is the most outrageous propaganda campaign I think I've ever seen. I was reading for the Daily Mail today and it's just just lunacy, really. Um, I mean, I, don't, I just don't see how calling a racist state racist is racist. That, well, Chris, that's just madness. Chris, Chris, there are all sorts of debates we can have about policy and about, you know, how, it, how Israel might have behaved and what criticism of them is reasonable, and we can debate that. But, Chris, you know, when you are the leader of the Labour Party uh, and you want to form the next government and photographs appear, as the Times have pointed out today, of you standing next to and laying wreaths with leaders of terrorist organisations that commit murder uh, basically on, 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 on religious grounds, isn't that just, doesn't that just make it impossible for you to become the next Prime Minister? Well, no, because they're also, uh, we, we have our leaders, Theresa May, uh, selling weapons to Saudi Arabia, that are using um, <coughs> a bombing, carping, carpet bombing, Yemen, including a bus full of school children last week. That's terrorism. The only difference is when we do it, or our allies do it, it's not called terrorism, it's called something else. Yeah, you know, I mean, I mean you know, we, you know, we, 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 we do sell arms to people, and, 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 and we import arms from people too, of course, but, uh, Chris, but, but uh, I've never seen a picture of Theresa May, you know, looking pleased to be with international terrorists. And there's a huge difference here, Chris. Corbyn's record of spending time with terrorist figures, you know, it's there, decade after decade after decade. Do you not see, Chris, why this is not a smear, this is actually a statement of fact that he does not pick his friends very, very wisely? Well, I agree that he doesn't, uh, I don't think he does himself favours, and I think he could have been more uh, forceful, and, and I think the truth's on his side, when because he, he might naively uh, do the wrong thing, but he does believe in peace and the Palestinian cause, but, you know, Israel's got a racial apartheid system, and he's against that. because He was against apartheid South Africa. Did anyone say he was anti-white because he was obsessed with apartheid South Africa? What's the difference? You know, it, 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 it's just, just madness. It's, the thing is, Israel are going down a, a dark road with their policies. They're becoming more and more insane. And it's not just Netanyahu, it's the state. And... Uh, you know, they're, they're give, soldiers giving each other high fives when they're killing people. And, and the Israeli population, 95% of them, supported the last massacre in Gaza in 2014. And they have to put up with suicide bombers. They have to put up with all sorts of things, Chris, don't they? They actually have to put up with neighbouring countries who want them obliterated and killed. Well, they're, 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 they've attacked every country around them with the support of the United States, who are giving them 10 million a day. But you know, that's because, they Chris, they are surrounded by countries that want to kill them all. Well, do you not understand? I mean, you, I mean, can't you see why, you know, Israel would... I mean, she may not have behaved perfectly at all times, I would agree with that. But, you know, if, look, Chris, we can find fault on both sides of this, all right? But Jeremy Corbyn hasn't just allied himself to a cause, he's allied himself to international terrorists. That, Chris, I think is the point. Well, it, like I said, Israel acts... It carries out acts of terrorism. We're talking about yeah. Jeremy Corbyn. I'm not talking about Israel. I'm not talking about apartheid. I'm talking about Jeremy Corbyn, who looks into the camera and wants to be our next Prime Minister. Chris, I don't think all of this evidence that we've seen, and much else that we've seen over the last few years, I don't think that makes him suitable. And I don't think that... I, I just don't believe this is solely a smear campaign. Nigel, everyone, it, well, it is a smear campaign. People need to watch the undercover Al Jazeera documentary about the Labour Party the, with the Israel lobby, with the guy from the uh, from the Israel, um, uh, the what's it called? Um, I've got what it's called. The, where, the where you have, yeah, but yeah. So you know they were caught on tape trying to smear Jeremy Corbyn. Kuyumana was in the in the video as well. You know they they are trying to 
It's the Israel lo lobby. They they don't want Corbyn because he's a supporter of Palestinian rights. I know. Uh, I know he's. he's <coughs> I think it's Chris. In Chris, you've made the point in defence of Jeremy Corbyn very passionately. But I, I've got to tell you, it's a lot deeper than that, in my view. I've got to move on. Uh, you're listening to the Nigel Farage Show exclusively on LBC. It is now seven forty-six. <laughs> Coming up at 8 on LBC, Clive Bull. Brexit negotiations have resumed today in Brussels. With just months to go, do you think we're looking at deal or no deal?